Range bloat and range rotation are two things that will never not be controversial in Warhammer. And this week's latest controversy has come from Age of Sigmar, where Games Workshop have announced they are discontinuing a number of units, many of which aren't too old. A lot of these are maybe eight years old, which is quite short for the lifespan of a Warhammer miniature. The Stormcast Eternals were Age of Sigmar's flagship faction, just like the Space Marines in 40k. And they made an absolute boatload of miniatures for them. It's clear to me they just aren't selling like how Space Marines sell in 40k. They're just not that popular. Of course Games Workshop want to follow the Space Marine model and port that to Sigmar. But it hasn't worked. Games Workshop clearly only stopped selling units that don't sell very well in the first place. Otherwise, they would continue them. And the classic example of that is the Tactical Marines. I mean, this is a fairly old set that has sold very well since it was released. And I think Tactical Marines have sold well for 30 years for Games Workshop. So they still sell them. They're discontinuing much newer sculpts than this. But we know for a fact that these sell well. So there's always this paradox between people who want the units to stick around and want Games Workshop to keep supporting them, but clearly aren't buying them. To me, it's kind of obvious. Games Workshop have got rid of almost all of these sculpts that were originally from Fantasy, mostly to update the Skaven and, and probably just because these orcs are not selling too well even with the old world. But range rotation is completely necessary. All of these sculpts were 10, 15, 20, 30 years old even when they first announced range rotation in 2022. And people weren't too upset because they gave you a chance to buy them. A lot of these did have rules still in the game. And then last year, it started to get more controversial when Games Workshop started to drop things like, say, the Firstborn Dreadnought, and people were accusing of Games Workshop of phasing Firstborn out of the game. But then you have this other side of the argument, which is rules bloat. You can't really win if you're Games Workshop. Half the people want units to stick around, and the other half think some rangers have too many units. There's a reason Games Workshop make a lot of Space Marines. It's very simple it makes them a lot of money. And when that those Space Marines stop making them a lot of money, they want to cut some of them because they don't need it. It's simple. It's, there's very little more to say than that. And I think many of these units are not good models. Most people who wanted rule support for these units want them because they have the models in their collection, they painted them, they put the time into them, but they're not buying new ones. They've just had them for a while. So from Games Workshop's perspective, they just have to support these rules for people forever. Well, no, they're not going to do that because they want to release new things, which make them a lot more money. And I'm sure you've noticed, and I've spoken about it here on the channel, that when Games Workshop do releases nowadays, they'll often re reveal and release multiple units at the same time. So Terminator, Terminator Character, Jump Pack, Jump Pack Character, Command Squad, Scouts, a big drop of Space Marines, you know, with various box sets surrounding these that you can also purchase. Big releases all in one go. We've seen it again with the Crew, for example. Lots and lots of Crew all revealed in a big box set. Why do they do this? Well, if you're inclined to buy these things, Space Marines, Crew, you're pretty likely to just buy all of it when it comes around. So Games Workshop are almost shooting themselves in the foot by making less. If, you, if you're going to buy three units, you're probably going to buy four. You're probably going to buy five. You're probably going to buy a couple of characters if they all drop at the same time. So why don't they just release more and more and more? And that's basically what they do. It makes complete sense. But once you've bought them once, 
you probably won't buy them again. So they have to release something else and something else and something else. Here we get to the concept of the whale. And here's some very simple data which shows what I'm talking about. These are number of transactions. And most of the transactions are quite small, say under $10. This is in just some iOS free game, right? But the actual revenue comes from just this 13% of large transactions. That's over half the revenue from this game. So these are people spending lots of money and they are contributing most of the revenue. And I think Games Workshop is actually very similar. Most people buy a bit, but most of Games Workshop's profits probably come from a few buyers who buy a lot. And in Warhammer, there are a lot of people who buy a lot. You only need to go onto YouTube to see some huge, huge collections of Warhammer. Some absolutely massive ones. And a lot of these are from professional YouTubers, for example. But this is not atypical of normal people. And I remember once I walked into a Games Workshop store, the guy said, what do you collect? I said, I paint some Space Marines, I have a Blood Angels army. And, he, and then he said, ah, are you interested in the new Imperial Guard range? And I said, no, no, I'm a Space Marine player. And he said, yeah, but this is the new stuff, like you want to buy. And he was really pushing this to me because they're told to do that. This, this is the sales tactic, it's his job. A lot of people collect, say, the Imperium. <laughs> and this is a real rabbit hole if you want the Imperial factions because there's a lot of them. You can have a huge Imperial army. There's about, a, I don't know, 100, 300 kits just in the Imperium alone, probably, possibly even more. And there are people who will buy almost all of them. They're collectors, right? It's typical in Magic the Gathering as well, this concept of a whale, people who buy huge amounts of stuff. This is why Games Workshop make their money. And why does this relate to discontinuing parts of the range? Well, a lot of the complaints about this range rotation is due to loyalty. People say I'm a loyal customer because I've had this army for 15 years and I've been playing it with the rules and now you're saying I can't play it anymore. That's not fun. I've had this Age of Sigma army for eight years and half my models are no longer going to be uh, continued in competitive play. It's, uh, I, you know, that's, you're treating me badly as your customer. Except you're not their customer anymore. You've already bought this. No one is buying these at the moment at all. So they discontinue them. It's not fun if you bought it 10 years ago and you still want to use it, but you bought it 10 years ago. Games Workshop, they want people who are going to spend money. It's, it's, it's obvious, right? So their loyal customers are these whales, <laughs> the people who are going to buy more and more stuff. And that's who they cater to. And that's exactly what they do. It's, it's, not, it's not a conspiracy. There's nothing more... Uh, difficult to to grasp than that really so from their perspective they have these models that no one buys they want to update some of these sculpts there's no way they can balance an infinite number of units and often if these models are not selling at all it's it's costing them money to maintain these to to keep uh, to stock the stock in the warehouse to uh, keep the injection molds um th this could be something that, that's being put resource that could be put towards another kit which does sell well and to be honest, 8 to 15 years, it's a very good product lifespan in terms of a company actively supporting something with rules. Think about phones. Most phones won't be actively supported with software updates after more than five years or so. Um, video games generally are not supported for too long. There's always a new update, and uh, expansion, etc. And card games as well. I mean, most card games have seasons. Many other games have this, these concepts. So 8 to 15 years or sometimes 20, 30 years to get out of a model in terms of competitive play is a pretty good product lifespan. This is unusually short for Warhammer, I'd say, but in general, Warhammer give you a huge lifespan on your purchases. Not because these models, they don't perish. They, they never perish. But, but also just because they do support the rules in, in general for almost everything for a very long time. And they don't even uh, get rid of these rules. They just go into non-competitive play. And this benefits competitive play. So yes, it's not fun for some people. 
but I think I'll just leave it here and say that if you're Games Workshop, why would you cater to someone who's going to spend no money on your product rather than to people who are going to spend money on your product? It's, it, it, it's suicide to just lose money like that. No one would do it. These are simply business decisions. And unfortunately, business decisions are always going to make the most impactful decision. It's always going to be the overriding factor for a company with shareholders. And that's just how it is. And I think people who are expecting anything different um, are probably a bit deluded. And unfortunately, if you want to play Warhammer and you want an, an army that you can use competitively uh, you know, for the rest of your life, you are probably going to have to refresh that every eight to ten years. Sorry. It's not a contract you sign with Games Workshop, but if you're getting into the hobby as someone new now, maybe only expect your model to be fully supported for eight to ten years if the models are fairly recent. And if you buy old models today, you can't guarantee that they're going to be supported for more than a few years. So I think everyone should know that when they get into this. There's obvious evidence out there that this is the case. So to me, the whales have a lot of power. But more importantly than that, sales have a lot of power. The Games Workshop are always going to follow their noses when it comes to what sells and what doesn't. Nothing that is selling out and popular will be removed. It may well be refreshed or updated, but it will not be removed from the game. It's never going to happen. It's just... Uh, just following what doesn't sell. It's all it is. It's really, 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 really simple. So I completely understand if you are not happy about this. I get it. But it's going to happen again. It's going to keep happening. So you can prepare for this. You can plan ahead. You can have some foresight over this. I don't think it's uh, as catastrophic as people like to make out. Please let me know what you think. I'm sure this will be controversial. I like making these controversial videos. Um, I have a, I don't have a perspective on this from a Age of Sigma player. I'm not one. So maybe people do have a different side of this. And I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say. If you like these sort of videos, then please do join our Discord. And we talk a lot about First Ball Marines <laughs> and uh, Games Workshop. But we also talk a lot about just the things we love about the hobby, which is a very positive and fun place to be. So please do swing by. And uh, if you like this sort of stuff, check out my other videos and please subscribe. We're a very easygoing channel here. We just talk stuff <laughs> and uh, there's no frills really. It's just, just, just what it is. So thank you and have a good day. I will see you soon.